be 30 million units versus the 50 million units previously forecast. Uh, joining us right now, our friend Ross Gerber from Gerber Kawasaki and our other friend, Max Wolf from Disruptive Technology Advisors. Happy New Year, guys. Welcome Thank back. You. Happy New Year. Uh, Ross, I know we're wringing our hands over 30 million in sales. Uh, well, that's nothing to sneeze at, but it's not 50 million. What do you think? I think these do, they do this every quarter. I mean, it's like they come out with these, these low estimates. They're always wrong. I mean, the only guarantee in finance is that analysts are wrong all the time. And so I, I think it's just way premature. We know there's a ton of sales that are in the future because it, by our estimates, 75% of iPhone users have not upgraded to the A or the X. So there's still way, way more sales to come. But iPhone X sales have been affected by the launch, the dual launch of the 8 and the X, essentially at the same time, splitting sales. And it's also a very high-priced uh, item here. So, so we're not that worried about it because the margins are huge. Did you notice that? Ross calls it the X, too. I'm the telling X. you, this is yeah. a problem. Yeah. It is the X. <laughs> Matt, Matt. So, so there will be a 10, I guess, in two years from now. <laughs> yeah, or an XS or a 10. What? Anyway, uh, Max, what do you think is the significance of these reports that the shipments may be as low as 30 million units? Well, look, I mean, I think we usually have sort of two extremes here. One is the company, which does guide below where they get to. That's kind of their game, right? They always say, hey, we think we're going to do a certain number, and they beat it. But then you get the enthusiasm and the run-up, especially when we saw the back orders and the difficulty folks were having in getting the new phone. And so you got to 50. The truth is probably in the middle. And the big story for them is going to be, can they sell enough of these phones to keep the average selling price up? And can they sell enough of these phones to sort of really cement in everyone's mind that the 10 or the X, if you will, is the dominant sort of top of the heap pace setter in smartphones? Looks like they're going to be able to do that. So we don't see this being problematic. We do think that it's high time they release that HomePod, though. If they don't do that pretty soon, they're going to seed that market, already 30 million installed units, to Amazon. Uh, Ross, come on. I mean, wasn't it, uh, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but I mean, part of the issue here is they brought out two phones at essentially the same time, the 8 and the X. Uh, yeah, and the 8 and, plus. You know, the, the, Three. plus the $1,000 price tag. I mean, they, one cannibalized the other, don't you think? Uh, I don't know if cannibalization. I think either this is a new strategy for Apple where they're just putting a premium phone out and a typical phone out, which it, if it is their strategy, I think they've been successful for it. If it isn't their strategy, then it's a failure because they sold a lot of lower price phones that might have been higher price phones if they didn't have two phones. But I actually think it's, it is their strategy to have two price points because it is a very expensive phone and they wanted to create a premium experience. And it's really working well for them in China because it, there's that cachet now of pulling out the iPhone X. And I call it the X because it sounds cooler personally. But, you know, <laughs> the, the, the bottom line when it comes down to it, this is the best iPhone I've ever used. It's an amazing phone. I highly recommend it. And, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence into the future. A year ago, I wasn't well, as confident, you know? What do you think about Max's point, though? And, you know, Amazon is trumpeting these numbers again. Alexa was the number one app searched over for and downloaded over the weekend. It wasn't Siri. The HomePod is delayed. It's nowhere to be seen. I mean, is it a big deal that they are seeding this market to their competitors? Uh, yeah, it's a big deal because it's easy money. These, these speakers, in my mind, are almost like worthless. But, you know, people love them. They're buying them. A lot of them. I mean, it was very popular this Christmas. Uh, it was requested by several relatives of mine. And, you know, we had to buy them the Google or the Sonos or, or the Amazon. And, and not having an Apple product as simple as this is a huge failure for them. Um, and this has been my criticism of them over the last year or two is sort of being reactive versus proactive in innovation. Right. Um, but, you know, all things said, they're having a great quarter. I can't even imagine their services revenue. And, you know, the truth is people are buying these headphones that I don't even like, like, by a ton. And <laughs> they're buying... A, and I'm seeing the watch, finally. So Apple's hitting on all cylinders here, not to mention tax reform. And everybody, anybody selling the stock in here, you know, I have to question their, their thought process a little bit. Okay, Max, I mean, you've been equally critical of the company for the lack of innovation for the last few years, uh, but yet here's Barron's over the weekend forecasting that this will be the first company to have that trillion-dollar market cap in 2018. Um, what are we missing? You know, I can hear Tim Wolf's, uh, Tim Cook's voice right now. 
We're sure. doing fine, folks, right? Yeah, they're incredibly good at making money, and they're incredibly good at doing the unthinkable historically, which is sell enormous, you know, tens of millions unit volume and keep a 40% gross profit margin, which is kind of the holy grail or the pot of gold at the end of the electronics rainbow. No taking that away from them. My, my question is, as they become more of a darling on Wall Street than in the Silicon Valley, that's when you begin to lose the halo that gives you a premium. But the truth is, that's probably a ways away. They're sitting on a cash hoard. And to the extent that they were sort of spared by some of the anti-tech rhetoric we've heard of late, I think they continue to be the only value play in tech land that still puts up growth. That's going to mean they're beloved by stock pickers and investors. And that romance will continue a lot longer after they stop being beloved for their innovation. That being right, said, well, we, the innovation's a canary get, in the mine. Ross, we got to go. Do you think they're a trillion uh, dollars next year, 200 bucks a share? Yeah, I think it's going to make it. I agree with Max completely, too. I, I think this is a great uh, opportunity for investors um, who have a good risk tolerance for technology. All right. Very good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you later. Happy Ross holidays. Kerber, Max Wolf Thank joining you. us. You, you too. too. Let's get to our closing.